By the end of the Great War, the human cost meant that nearly every family from around the British Empire had suffered losses. Many of the fallen remained unidentified, resting in war graves far from home. One man's determination to honor these brave men led to the story of the Unknown Warrior. In 1916, Reverend David Railton, while serving as an army chaplain on the Western Front, had seen a small wooden cross marking a grave with the words, an unknown British soldier. He later wrote, How that grave caused me to think. I thought and thought. What can I do to ease the pain of father, mother, brother, sister, sweetheart, wife and friend? Quietly and gradually there came out of the mist of thought this answer, clear and strong. Let this body, this symbol of him, be carried over the sea to his native land. After writing to the Dean of Westminster, Herbert Ryle, in 1920, he proposed that a British soldier known only to God be laid to rest in Westminster Abbey amongst the kings. This was to represent the many thousands that never returned. The proposal was met with enthusiasm and so began the journey of bringing this unknown warrior back where he belonged, back home. On the evening of the 7th of November, 1920, the remains of four unidentified soldiers, one from each of the four main battlefields, were placed in the chapel at saint paul sur ternoise near Arras in France. Brigadier Wyatt and Lieutenant Colonel Gell of the Directorate of Graves Registration and Inquiries entered the chapel alone. The four coffins were draped in Union flags and indistinguishable from each other. With eyes closed, Brigadier Wyatt rested his hand on one of the coffins. The selection of the unknown warrior was made. Coffin stayed at the chapel overnight, and on the afternoon of the 8th of November, it was transferred to the medieval castle within the ancient citadel at Boulogne. A Légion d'honneur en masse kept a vigil overnight. The following morning, the coffin was placed in a casket of oak timbers of trees from the grounds of Hampton Court Palace and placed onto a French military wagon. At 10.30 a.m., all the church bells of Boulogne tolled, and the mile-long procession led by 1,000 local schoolchildren, escorted by a division of French troops, made a solemn march to the harbour.
quayside, Marshal Foch saluted the casket before it was carried up the gangway of the British destroyer HMS Verdun. Just before noon, HMS Verdun slipped anchor and, with an escort of six battleships from the Atlantic fleet, crossed the English Channel to Dover. Precious cargo arrived at Admiralty Pier, Dover, to a 19-gun salute fired from Dover Castle. It was placed in utility van number 132, and at 5.50 p.m. on the 10th of November, it began its three-hour train journey to Victoria Station. Arriving at Platform 8 at 8.32 p.m. and now regarded as a national symbol, the representative of the thousands who made the ultimate sacrifice, the unknown warrior, was greeted by a guard of honor and a large, silently respectful crowd. A plaque marks the site and every year on the 10th of November, a small remembrance service organized by the Western Front Association takes place between platforms eight and nine to honor and pay respects to this most significant of arrivals. It remained there overnight under escort until interment at Westminster Abbey the following day. On the morning of the 11th of November, the coffin was placed on a gun carriage drawn by six black horses from the Royal Horse Artillery. Huge crowds had gathered as the carriage traveled between lines of troops, their heads bowed and rifles reversed for the short journey from Victoria Station to Westminster Abbey.
thousands came to pay their respects, lining the route as the carriage drew past, heading towards the Cenotaph, a hugely symbolic national shrine commemorating the 1.1 million British and Empire dead of the First World War and celebrating its centennial year. Representing an empty tomb, it immediately caught the public imagination, becoming a powerful focus for the grief of a nation and to honor the fallen, the glorious dead. Over a million people visited in the first week and as Big Ben chimed 11 o'clock, a two minute silence fell throughout the capital, throughout the land, across the empire and on the seas before the cenotaph was unveiled after the haunting notes of the last post rang out. After the unveiling, the king placed his wreath of red roses and bay leaves on the coffin. His card read, in proud memory of those warriors who died unknown in the great war, unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold they live. The cortege comprising the escorting pallbearers and followed by the king, the royal family and ministers of state continued to Westminster Abbey. Arriving at the north door of the Abbey, it was flanked by a guard of honor of 100 recipients of the nation's highest military honor, the Victoria Cross. congregation settled and the choir sang. 100 women selected from the 15,000 who had lost a husband and one or more sons, bereft with emotion, took their place and as the dean began to conduct the service, cries of mourning echoed around the abbey. The procession made its way to the grave, carefully removing the wreath, sidearms and helmet and the union flag and lowered the coffin into the grave. After the Lord's Prayer, the hymn, Abide With Me, was sung with spirit and heartfelt emotion as the burial service came to a close. Servicemen from the armed forces stood guard as tens of thousands of mourners on a scale never seen before filed silently past the unknown warrior to pay their respects.
the identity of the unknown warrior will rightly never be known. He represents the son of every mother, the husband of every wife, the brother of every sister, killed in the great war and every war. Those whose loved ones were amongst the unknown know that in this tomb there may be, there is, resting the body of their beloved, and with it brings the hope and joy of many thousands, knowing that this body, this symbol of him, will always be remembered then, now, and forevermore, as the unknown warrior is finally home.